Um, it's where all the water comes from and drains down into. And the way you define one watershed is that all the water in that particular region drains down into one place. And if you've noticed, around where you guys live, you're surrounded by two big ranges of mountains. You see them every day, and you can see a really good view of them outside these windows, too. So to the east, there's a big brown set of mountains over here with Mount Diablo on the top of it. And the name of that particular mountain range is the Diablo Range. Okay? And that makes up one boundary of your watershed. And on the, your west, there's sort of these more green ones, and those are the Santa Cruz Mountains. And those two mountain ranges make up our watershed. We live in between them. And that ridge line, every time it rains and snows, all the water drains down off those mountains. It shapes the land, and it flows down to one common place. this place all look like before all these palm trees and things were planted and streets were paved and houses were built and, and all the different changes have been made to it. This place has been changed a lot over the past a short period of time, 80 years, 100 years, 150 years. It's, it's almost nothing what it used to look like. Um, this place has rich human history. People have been living here for over 15,000 years, okay? well before Jesus was born and the pyramids were built, things like that, there were people out here. And um, they had evolved and adapted to live in this landscape, just like the plants and animals and things that, that were living out here. Um, this was all, this valley that we live in was sort of an oak grassland. So it was loaded with these different kinds of oak trees. There was sort of a savanna, and there was lots of marshlands, because these rivers that flow throughout the area where we live, um, they would flood from time to time, and drew out of this area. Um, wetlands used to be 5% of the whole state, and now they're less than 0.5% of the whole state. So a massive, massive shift. And so there's a lot of different ways that we connect to it. And that's what I want to kind of talk to you guys about, and what you know you guys are going to start to think about in your, maybe in your video or whatever it is the project you're going to do. So before we do that, we've got this crazy box over here. And there's a bunch of snakes inside of it. What? Yes! Oh, nice. snakes. Um, this is, this has got inside here just another little closer up view of our watershed. So we should take a look at that, and then we can sort of go back into our conversation afterwards. So I'm going to take this off, and you guys can come on over. So all your water goes into this wastewater treatment plant. You guys see that? I see it. The water goes in there, it gets cleaned. Everyone's water connects to the sewer system and gets cleaned. After it's clean, oh, that's delicious. it comes out into the bay. It's fresh water. That's clean water. Right? Millions of gallons of water every day go through this process. Actually, 100 million gallons a day. Now, this would be one of our other connections to our watershed, okay? Our storm drains. These are in place because this is all probably on top of wetlands, or what used to be a wetland, that was soaking in water. Now when it storms, you've got to have a place for all your water to go when it rains like that. And they go into these storm drains so that they're not flooding our streets. And storm drains connect. They don't go, like all the water that was in your home got cleaned after it was used, right? So all of our poo water isn't just flowing out into this watershed. Oh, that'd, be disgusting. Right? that'd be really nasty. It used to do that in 1940, in the 30, you know, the beach. 1950 is when they built the wastewater treatment plant. Before that, everyone's everyone's sewage water was just going out into the bay. Really gross. It was a really smelly, gross place out there. Um, it's a good thing that we changed that. Now, that water gets clean from your home. Um, around our streets, That anything that goes into a storm drain um, goes into nearby waterways. They connect to creeks. And some of them are even painted on them, and they say, this goes to a creek or to the bay, right? And so that's how they kind of work. Is the water from Lee's water treatment center the same as recycled water? Um, sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't. So you guys may have seen recycled water around where you live, and 
You can always tell you're looking at recycled water because there's usually purple pipes or signs nearby, and that's the source of recycled water. That is the water that left your house and went and got cleaned at a wastewater treatment center. Um, and then it actually, rather than go out into the bay, it pumped back into the city and got reused again. So they're mainly using that for irrigation of plants and things along the highway and stuff like that. At parks, a lot of time, they're watering the grass, the plants there too. Um, it's a really good thing because that is actually one of the solutions to some of this problem is that they're recycling our water, giving it another use in their life. So it's not wasting and causing any impact or, or harm really. Um, it helps our water supply massively. significant ways that we impact our watershed. You know, our creeks, Coyote Creek, is considered to be one of the most polluted creeks in the country because all the garbage that goes down our storm drains and concentrates into that creek. Um, just plastic bags in the grocery store. You know why they talk about banning plastic bags in the grocery store and all this stuff. Um, that gets into those creeks into the storm drains into those creeks and it chokes them out really bad. Um, our wastewater is getting things in it like um, we call it fogs, fats, oils, and greases. So normally at home, like you cook, you don't want to pour baking grease down the drain because it clogs up your pipes. But yeah, people still do it anyway. These all fat, oil, and greases get into our wastewater treatment system and cause it to be impaired and then they can't clean and treat some of the more toxic things that might go through that place before they get out into the environment. And so then what you have happening on the other end is you get heavy metals or hormones or things like that going out into our creeks and out into our wetlands and really significantly affecting the species that live there. So both these two animals, and that's kind of why I bring them up. This is the place where you live and this is the only place where they live too, so you're tightly tied to them. Um, they don't live in Santa Cruz, you know, they don't live in Sacramento, they don't live in Shasta, or anywhere in the whole world, this is the only place where they're ever found. But there's really positive things that happen in our watershed all the time, and so I don't want you guys to think that it's like dying and everything's just screwed. Because it's not. There's people out there, like we all, helping to change minds. There's big projects like water recycling, okay? That's been great. They're taking the lands that were once chopped up and turned for industrial uses, and they're restoring them. They're growing them back into wetlands again. Simple water conservation things, I tell them to um, put, make things like this, okay? An old water bottle. You know how a toilet works? When you flush your toilet, it fills up with water up top in that big reservoir. And every time you flush your toilet, it uses two or three gallons worth of water. Um, if you take something and plunk it up in the top filling compartment of your toilet, the water's going to fill in around it, and it'll only fill to that same level. And when you flush afterwards, it's going to use 16 ounces less worth of water. So then you've just saved a little bit of water every time you flush your toilet by placing this in that filling compartment of your toilet. It's called a toilet displacement device. People used to put bricks up in their toilets, too. Um, so there's super simple things like that that if we all as a society did it, um, would make a huge difference. And so I'm sure you guys probably have plenty of ideas. I do get people to fill out water conservation pledges. And I'd like you guys to do this before you leave too if you want to. Is fill out a pledge on different things that you might be able to do to use less water at home and reduce the amount of urban runoff that goes out into our environment. I learned that there's actually not much of a difference between recycling water and also processing it, cleaning it. It just goes different directions. The watershed is um, where the water goes. You can um, turn the faucet off if you're using it while you're brushing your teeth. Don't put stuff down the drain, just put water and use less water. <laughs>